Morning. This is the first time that I get to say hello, tribe. I want to talk briefly, or at least as briefly as I can with the amount of info I want to share about the physical domain of the deliberate discomfort challenge I'm coming to the end of. Today's day 55. I actually just finished up the first half and the toughest valor challenge of the challenge so far. Uh, first half of the physical domain this morning, which was arms day, and then a valor challenge for U.S. Marine Corps Corporal Christopher Daniel Greer, who was killed in 2005. Now that that quick preamble is out of the way, wanted to talk about some of the highlights for me in this physical domain. The challenge is aptly named Deliberate Discomfort, and as I've been a pretty steady gym goer for years, I had to let go of my own routine for a bit and get uncomfortable with someone else calling the shots for the workout that we'd find out the night before. Uh, each workout. I've gotten in a groove with the push-pull legs breakdown, so these muscle splits kind of threw me off initially, and uh, not knowing the workout till the night before meant that I basically had to hand write uh, each workout before it started uh, as a log versus my usual uh, logging app. Shout out to Make Those Gains for Android. It's probably on iPhone too. Great app. You can create your own workouts and it keeps you on track, rest periods, all that good stuff. But that was a challenge in itself. Uh, I've always been pretty good about time management and pre-staging my equipment. And that was absolutely key to ensuring the time between my feet hitting the floor in the morning and heading out the door to knock out the first workout was minimized. Although I've been doing it for quite some time, James Clear gave it a name in his book, Atomic Habits. He actually referred to it as reducing the friction for a habit. Um, I'll actually talk about the mental domain in a couple of days. That's all the reading we had to do. Basically, present day Dave will reduce the friction for early morning Dave. So there's less of a cognitive load at 4 a.m. So I can stumble around the house, grab a cup of coffee, do whatever I need to do, finish my stuff. And then hit the road to the gym or hit the road with my running shoes on, depending on the weather and my schedule for the day. But even with the time management, I still had some challenges. An early morning arrest a few Wednesdays back at 6 a.m. meant that my feet hit the floor at 2.45 a.m. And my feet hit the track at 3.03 a.m. to bang out the sprints. Personal experience for me is that sprints or speed work before working the legs reduces my risk of injury. It's miserable regardless, but you know, it is what it is. Deliberate discomfort, right? There were some high points in the physical stuff. I've used the Nike Run Club app for years and I cannot recommend their guided runs enough. But I looked for a new one and came up with a run guided by Megan the Stallion. Very quickly into the run, I realized I was not the target audience. But I embraced it and actually laughed multiple times as I was running. The following high points in that particular guided run were the following. My inner hottie is improved by each run. I get closer to the booty that I want with each run. I am more of a stallion than a pony. And last but not least, I am a strong woman. Megan the Stallion kept referring to me, the runner, as sis. So it was a very empowering run. I did find some humor in it. It did make the 45 minute run a little, uh, a little more enjoyable. So the weirdest day for me of the physical domain was a 5k I ran a couple weeks back. So I knew I had a 45 minute run that day. I knew I'd probably do the 5k in 20 something minutes. I crossed the finish line at 26 minutes, walked for 90 seconds or so to clear out my side stitch and then turned around at the finish line and ran back out upstream for another 19 minutes. I got tons of you can do it from people coming into the finish line uh, because I was heading the wrong direction. They probably assumed that I had just left to start the 5K. I ended up running in a little harder than I intended to as we are wont to do in 5Ks and I did 5.7 miles in those 45 minutes. I usually hover around five and a quarter or 5.1 or so. So that was a little harder pace than I anticipated. The best day of the physical domain for me is a toss up between the sprints that I did with my son in the Louisiana hotel parking lot on a Wednesday morning as we 
did our road trip to get him to his first Navy ship. And then uh, the other toss up would be he joined me for the 45 minute run while we were still in Florida. Um, and that was a good time running in the dark, just kind of talking and enjoying the run together. And the most physically demanding of all the physical stuff was actually last Saturday, still in Florida. So Friday night on my way to bed, I got a work call that lasted about a half hour or so. Uh, I was on my way to bed. Uh, finally got to bed, got about five and a half hours of sleep, got up at 3 a.m. to knock out the arms at a local gym and then the Valor Challenge and then the 45 minute run and then went back, showered up and drove to the Irreverent Warriors Silkies Hike where I met some really cool guys. Derek, Johnny, Maurice, what's up? And then we walked about nine miles. So that night I slept the sleep of the dead. My Samsung watch said that I had hit 356% of my step goal. And my fitness pal said I burned almost 4,000 calories. So that was quite the day, uh, quite the challenge, but hey, made it happen. Last but not least, uh, the diet stuff was another part of it. I was already eating relatively clean uh, before this challenge, but for the challenge, I knocked my caffeine intake down drastically, like drastically, like maybe a couple 24 ounce mugs of coffee every day, um, occasionally a monster or a bang. Uh, I think your daily limit's supposed to be about 300 milligrams. That's what you get in one bang. So I was drinking more caffeine than I thought I was. So this time I switched to matcha tea, I did some half decaf, half full coffee, only like one cup a day. Um, and then the rest of the day, I do uncaffeinated herbal tea. Uh, in addition to that, I knocked my water intake up to 200 ounces a day. Uh, again, got a tracker on my phone. So if I take a sip of four or five ounces, I can just hit the button and it adds. And over the day, incremental gains. By the end of the night, it tells me how much water I've taken in. And the weirdest one, the one I get the weirdest looks for, I've been doing one meal a day since September. I kind of stepped up the intermittent, intermittent fasting game just to test things out. Uh, since September, I've been doing one meal a day. So I was a little nervous going into the challenge to see if I could maintain my energy levels uh, on one meal a day and doing two workouts a day. It worked. Um, I guess I should say a little bit, it's one meal a day and then a little bit after dinner, I'll have a bunch of protein to kind of ensure I hit 150 grams uh, every night. So it ends, it's worked pretty well. I got great energy levels and been able to maintain everything. I end up fasting about 20 to 22 hours each day is what it averages out to. One last thing for the physical domain. This is to all the guys out there that might be watching this video. If you get a chance, look up Akira the Dawn, A-K-I-R-A, -A, the Dawn. He uh, does some remixes. Um, he's like a, D a British DJ, I think. There's a track he made with Jocko Willink called Fight. That came on randomly during a workout a month, month and a half ago, maybe. Gave me an extra rocket boost of energy. The lyrics are so simple, but so motivating. Highly recommend. Akira the Dawn, the track is Fight. Anyway, uh, tomorrow, I'll be back to talk a little bit about the spiritual domain. Have yourself a great Saturday.